That's a record? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Black sun in the hizzle. Oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. But first, I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, his staff, or affiliates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. And the views of White Sun does not reflect that White Sun. That's my alternate personality. Kevin knows about it. I play the antagonist sometimes. So, with that being said, I'm gonna introduce the person to my right. What's going on, Kevin? Thanks for having me. I'm Kevin. I'm here again. Uh, been on a couple times to talk about international issues. Your family, man. Your family. Yeah, and and I'm excited today to talk about something right here. Maybe maybe bring in some of the international aspects to it. Okay. But uh, excited to talk. I'm Kevin, and and uh, I'm ready to go. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm Tassidy Lynch. I'm a medical student at Morehouse School of Medicine, and this is my first time here on the show. I'm just here to. I guess voice my opinions and have a good conversation with you guys. That's right. Hey, I'm Marlon. Um, I'm an activist and general rabble rouser. And I'm here to talk about whatever we want to get into, but um, especially about um, what's been going on with the KKK lately. All right. Tell them about the fine organization you're part of, Cop Watch and Foods and Not Bombs. Yeah, well, so I'm involved with a lot of different that's right, organizations. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> those are my two personal favorites, but okay, all right. Yeah, so we got, we got Cop Watch, which is an effort to, uh, to, to take direct action against police harassment, police brutality. Um, we film the cops, right? Um, we got Food Not Bombs, which is a, a direct action to prevent um, hunger and, um, you know, oppression of homeless people that's right. here in Atlanta. Uh, we got the Atlanta Anarchist Black Cross, which is about oh. supporting prisoners and okay. people on the inside who are dealing with oppression from, you know, the prison industrial complex, and all kinds of other stuff, you know, whatever. Okay, okay. And we got King of the Hebrew Israelites. That's just a poor colored country boy right here with these uh, elite <laughs> young people. <laughs> you Don, your servant, welcome to the arena. All right, all right, kid. We gonna get right to. It. We had a dang dispute down there in South Carolina, South Kakalaki. That's right. They turned, they took down the Confederacy, cut <laughs> down the flag. I don't understand why the neighbors are getting all riled up. This is Dixie. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> and the Klan, they riled up. You know, I, I'm gonna just say this for the record, because this is a big mystery. How is it every time? You know, I'm not gonna even go there. I'm gonna go there. This is the arena. Go ahead. Because I got friends uh -huh. in the Black Panther Party. Uh -huh. How is it every time that I got some friends in the Jewish, you know, when every time they do their protest? Wait, what, Jew the um, Jewish? When they, they had a, I don't know which group it was, but basically you had the Klan on one side and the Jewish people on the other side. Oh, I see. And my question is, how is it every time the Klan gonna have a rally, these folks are notified somebody out there? I mean, there's a Klan be like, hey, how's Seaman Zing? We gonna have our boys down there. You bring your boys down there. I'm just saying. Exactly. How is it every time the Klan has something, we got another side, I mean, somebody's like giving somebody a phone call here. Exactly. And say, yeah. We gonna have our boys, you have our boys, we gonna goddamn put on a good show. That's right. That's just Well, you don't, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot, but That's like, right. I, my understanding was this recent rally, right, mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, the Klan had kind of said they were going to be out there. They were going to they were gonna go do something, right? Oh, okay, okay. But my understanding was there was also a Black Power rally at the same time. Right. Now, Marlon, you were there, so maybe you can clarify some of this. But I also, I mean, just watching some of the footage that mm -hmm. was available online, it looked like this Black Power rally was very in a distinct location. Right. And then some of the, the Klan rally decided to go and moved in that direction to actually be be in the same area. Now, I don't know, can, can you uh, comment on any of that, Marlon? I mean, maybe maybe give us some background. When was this and Yeah, this what happened? was uh, two Saturdays ago. And um, the, so the Klan had their rally, the Klan had scheduled their rally first. Okay. And when word got out about it, because they got to apply for a public permit. That's right. Mm -hmm. They can't just, I mean, they could just roll up to the steps of the state house and have a rally, but it's not going to work out well for them, right? Right, right. They need police protection. And so they have to apply publicly for a permit. And to be honest, the, this is all about posturing for them. So okay. they announced that they're going to do this because okay. it's kind of they're, they're issuing a challenge, right? We're going to be there. What is anybody going to do about it? 
Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we had these other groups. There's a black power group that, that applied to have a rally on the other side of the, right. of the, the state house. <coughs> so you got these two groups doing their rallies, but um, it's actually the opposite happened. I okay. mean, okay. there I were some people that came to antagonize the mm -hmm. black power rally, but they didn't really get much of a response. Everybody was just like, get out of here. What are you doing? Um, but once the Klan showed up, everybody went over to that side oh, to, I see. to show our hatred of them, right? Mm -hmm. And to show, you know, to how, how much we rejected them. Very nice. And it got pretty hectic. So you mean there were people antagonizing the uh, new black men of the party? Or the, you say the... Yeah, well, you, so it was all about the Confederate flag, right? I mean, it's right. about a lot of things, but in a lot of ways, it was centered around the Confederate flag. And so you have all these different... There's white people have a complicated relationship with the Confederate flag, I'll tell right, you. Because right. you get these people that come out there and they're flying the Confederate flag and they're like, no, I'm not a racist. I just really like the Confederate flag and I think we should have it. But okay. like nobody else is gonna put up with that, right? Like that's, the Confederate flag is like a clear symbol of, of slavery and of, uh, you know, of white supremacy. Right, now, now to, I wanna address that. Now, I think the problem lies because, I mean, you know, the, the Klan has their flag, even the Black Power Proof have a flag, you know, you know, LGBT have a flag. And so I think it becomes an issue when you, when it's state sponsored. So I'm gonna say, as a black person, I don't object to you having a Confederate flag on your front porch, but when it's the state flag, now I'm a taxpayer, and I got to pay into that and don't necessarily represent me. It's just like they were arguing, believe it or not, when this is shot out to goddamn, what's his name, Lee? What's his name down there in South Carolina, Senator? Uh, I'm not Bobby Lee, God Bobby dang Senator. He was against taking down the Confederate flag. And he said, well, what are we going to put up next, the rainbow flag? And I was like, wow. But the rainbow flag is not state sponsored. If you have a rainbow flag on your truck, I don't object. You'd have a Confederate flag on your truck. I don't object. If you have a red, black, and green, I don't object. I don't even see scared hands with swastikas. I don't object as long as it's not represented by the state. Right. I don't know. I don't okay, know. Well, let's, okay. Okay, let's talk I about mean, it. here's the thing, right? We got this idea in liberal democracy that right. says free speech, right? That's true. Free speech is the highest value. Everybody can say whatever they want, and true. it's all it's all okay because we all have the right to free speech, right? right. But I mean, that's how fascism starts to take hold. Okay, is is okay. when we say, oh, that's all right. You want to talk about how, you know, black people are less than everybody else? That's just your opinion. You can say it over there and nobody's going to have a problem with it. Part, part of free speech is that you take the consequences of your speech. You can say anything that you want, right. but you need to take the consequences of it. And the consequences are people are going to hate you and people are maybe going to slash your tires and not hire you for a job right. and treat you like a horrible person because you are a horrible person. And maybe you have the right to say those things, but that doesn't mean you don't get any consequences for it. Okay. That, that gives me a question, right? Okay. Okay, so, and I'm, I'm playing a little bit devil's advocate here, but... Um, we could do that on me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, all right, so you're right. I, I completely agree, actually. The value of free speech is to say, like, you can say whatever you want, but you must endure the consequences. Now, does that mean that because someone believes in, you know, say, raising the Confederate flag, or if they believe in white supremacy and they're advocating those values, does the state have an obligation to protect those people from having their, sla their tire slashed or being punched in the face for being idiots? I mean, I don't... That's a good question. I agree that they're idiots, but well, does the state have an obligation to protect their right to say those things. I mean, look, if you look at it historically, every time we've looked to the state to protect marginalized people, we've been betrayed, right? We've been left hanging, right? We're like, oh, wait, but the, isn't the state supposed to help us here and keep people, make sure that everything's equal and make sure everybody's protected? The state doesn't do that. And like, maybe they claim that that's their job and maybe they claim that they're here to take care of us, but, but that's not real, right? Ultimately, we gotta look to ourselves and to each other to create the kind of like free speech or the, the kind of society that we want, right? And that means that we can't just look to the government to be like, hey, are they allowed to do that or not? <laughs> we gotta decide, are they allowed to do that or not? And, and when we see things we don't wanna be allowed, we need to put a stop to it. Okay, and I'm, I'm glad you, you're bringing that up because even within, 
and I was going to try to save this for another show, but I'm going to definitely come on Kevin's show and discuss this because, oh man, this is, see, this goes into not only a theocracy, which I despise as an atheist, but this goes off into states' rights versus federal. This goes into separation of church and state. I mean, there's so many paradigms of, and you said fascism. Let's just find fascism because I'm thinking that if a government tries to impel one view or another, isn't that a form of fascism too? Or what, what's your take on that? Or I don't know. I mean, if I was gonna like try to define or explain fascism, it's it's some specific characteristics, right? Okay, it's, okay. it's not just a government that's bossy, right? All governments are bossy, right? But yeah. it's it's specific things, right? So authoritarian, centralized control, right? right, like right. Dictatorial right. control, right. suppression of labor power. Which he's for. Um, <laughs> he's for. <laughs> emphasis <laughs> of uh, emphasis of racism and other forms of intolerance, right? Like like anti-immigrant hysteria, right. homophobia, religious purity, all these kinds of elements. Um, that that's what fascism is, and you see it in a lot of different societies, right? It's not just an American. Thing. That's true. We see it in Europe. We see it in you know South America. Um, and we got to watch out for it because a lot of times, you know, every time fascism has like risen in a society, everybody's been like, nah, that couldn't happen here. Everybody's, everybody's too cool in our society. We would never let, fa you know, fascism take hold. And then it does, right? Right. Um, and, and it could happen in America too. And I think, and I'm glad you said that because you got the religious right. And, you know, I'll get your take on this. But I mean, like, okay, the pushback I heard against the, uh, gay marriage was that, you know, it's not right in the eyes of God, and you know, based on their beliefs, you know, it's wrong for a man and a man and a woman and a woman to get married. But my thing is that if you won't want them to get married, then don't tax them. No taxation without representation. It's simple, isn't that right, Gideon? It's simple. Don't tax the homosexuals. But the capitalists ain't gonna allow that, are they? They gonna keep the hands in the pockets of you, me, and the homosexuals and everybody. So my thing is why, you know, I don't, I don't understand this whole pushback. Are the church and state in cahoots with each other? They are getting, of course they are. Of course, they are. that's why the government always go, I'm just giving my opinion, abusing opinions that a black son. Isn't that why God dang Bush came down here, pet Eddie Long on the back, said good job, there you go, boy. Did good job there. Pass by the niggers. Yes. Tell them Jesus is gonna save everything. I want to hear the young lady's okay, okay. perspective. I don't <laughs> perspective on what particularly. I don't know. Oh, we ju okay. We, we you just you can yeah. jump in. Yeah, we can jump in anytime. We just okay. kind of just just kind of getting the pot stirred up here a little right, bit. Right. Mm -hmm. But we trying to. I mean, the subject is on basically the Klan, mm -hmm. and they. I guess they feel. Now I, I talk to a lot of mm -hmm. clans, been the neo Nazis, and they feel like they're very patriotic. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to represent their. Uh, freedom of speech or right to bear arms, and I'm like, that sounds pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. But then when you get off and like you tend to the hatred thing, I think that I mean we got hatreds on both sides, don't we? Well, again, I want. I mean, you got to get it. You hate the homosexuals, don't you? No, uh, what I hate. Your Bible says to kill them, throw them. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, that's. Well, see, the let's, let's look at the term confederacy. Okay. And that's what we're dealing with, uh, the flag, the Confederate flag. There's nothing wrong with uh, being Confederate. It's according to what you're being Confederate about. And see, you really outlined a very important aspect of what a democracy, quote unquote, is supposed to reflect, mm -hmm. and that being a part of all the nationalities that make up this uh, governmental structure. Not only nationalities, but different cultures too, even within that well, nationality. The cultures define the nationalities for, in, in, to a large degree. But no, see, whoa, whoa, the, whoa, whoa, what? The cultures define the nationality. Oh, okay, you're right, okay. my bad, okay, go now, ahead. Now, the term government, and then when I hear young people say, say this term, and it's, it's almost like it's an alien entity. We are the government, the government, is simply a construct, it's a nautical term, to define the elite that control the policies, the administration of those policies, and the military that is there, and the police force to enforce those policies. Right. So when we talk about, the, it, but the young man added right that uh, we are supposed to change the policies if they are not ones that promote 
freedom and justice for all. But first you gotta and therein lies the quandary for melanated, woolly-haired people. Because the change of policies is not for us, it's for them. Because we've seen an unequal application of uh, judicial Wait a minute inequality. Here. Wait a minute here. You got a Negro president, got Congress yeah, Rod, yeah. Cody Fire. Yeah. What are you talking about there? That's you got all. Got Negroes all up in the government. That's hey. superficial. That's superficial, but it is what it is. It, well, it has not changed the policy of our people being mistreated. What policies have you asked Mr. Obama or anybody else to change? You you talk about don't vote. No, no, no. Keep Kevin guilty of that too. But yeah, America you talk about don't has vote. already <laughs> outlined the policies of freedom, justice, and equality. Give us your poor. Give us your down trodden and mm -hmm. your outcast. As long as they're and not the willy haired and melanated, no, that's we've not used true. them up. See, we have to look at how it's been applied to us. We have to look at how our, the educational system, mm -hmm. we have to look at how housing, the health care system, now it's been federalized, but this is the point. You've got, it's been forced on us. So once again, oh, what we're talking been about, forced. because mm -hmm. you must have it in order, and if you don't, there's a tax penalty associated with it. So here I am at coming at an age of almost 65, well, almost 60, soon to be 65, where I'm already some automatically supposed to get Social Security and all this other stuff. But what the question I asked in my younger years, which was maybe about five years ago, is how do I get out of the Social Security system? There is no way out. Mm -hmm. That's what you don't know. You, unless you try to get out, you get find out there the is no way out. So what we find, I have no problem with the uh, Confederate flag. Because when they were using, when they were Confederate. Of course, you don't, have no, you don't have a problem with the Bible. The Bible and the Confederacy are one and the same. In a sense, you're Why correct. Are you, are you, I mean, it and teaches I, I racism. Like it teaches goddamn uh, 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 oppression. It teaches slavery. It teaches homophobia. Yes, your Bible does. And it teaches you to kill the people who don't believe the same way you do. Well, this is the issue. As it Deny it. I'm not. <laughs> right, I'm not. exactly. I'm not going to. So that is a book of hate. No, that's a book that serves white supremacy. Yes, it does. Well, the KKK thinks it is. That's right. Well, the KKK are uh, the uh, Christian Knights of the, the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Clowns. So when we look at this uh, amalgamation of believers, they have a philosophy, and of course, I did do a play Based on words the there intentionally. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with them unless they're killing me. Get in. Let's right. see. We never wanted to uh, live, not with you, with you all, mm. in the larger <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. We had Rosewood, we had Black Wall Street, we had enclaves of uh, independent thought and philosophy and entrepreneurial spirit, and we prospered. They saw it, and like, bam! We, no, you niggas didn't decide to go and prosper. We, you ain't gonna cut you. You come becoming uppity. So again, I can live beside a see racist. This term has been misunderstood. I am a racist. I'm not a bigot. There's a difference. And see how we define terminology is very crucial. How are you defining racist? Yeah, please. A racist is the one from a dictionary's perspective who is up and promotes and is down with his or her race. No. Yes, it is. A bigot is one who hates for the fact that you have locks, that you're woolly-haired, that you moved in his neighborhood or her neighborhood, that you got a job that they used to have, and as a result of that, now they hate you. So I don't have a problem with a person, whether they call themselves a Klan, a Confederate person, or whoever, uh, that loves their race. I love mine. I want to have self determination. Well, yeah, I think what yeah, the problem is different. It's okay. different. You, you you can't you can't conflate black people who love black people with white people who love white people. White power. Because you're because you're ignoring the power structure that exists mm -hmm. there, right? To believe in white power is to believe in in white people ruling over all other people. I don't think that's what like when when somebody you know when a black nationalist says black power, black people are beautiful. They're not saying black people should rule the world 
and control all other people. But that is what the KKK is saying. That well, that's what the want. Bible says. They want a race war, yeah. which they intend to win yes. and enslave all other people because well, see, they believe that's the natural order of things. Understand I'm this. Let me right. address it right briefly. What you're saying and what the Klan is saying is actually what's going to happen. Because, see, in a capitalist system, their capitalism is like a cancer. A cancer is an abnormal, unlimited growth of cells. Capitalism has no boundaries. They're in space right now looking for new property to control. What we find is, under a capitalist agenda, there are no boundaries. So what we're saying is simply, and, and what the Klan is saying is, if we can't control everything, we're going to kill off everything that we can't control. What they're ultimately saying is they're going to kill themselves. Because the understanding the natural order of prey and predator, we're all linked. So that's why the Bible and having an understanding of the natural order of things is so important. Because you find out that even though you may not want to live next to me, we're still brothers. And that's what the 60s generation that you guys missed, we promoted it on the surface. But when the capitalists, one percent, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, the elite that we term government, began to no, and it's, it's not a conspiracy theory. Okay. It is a when you say uh, Illuminati and building no, all what did George Bush movies? say? There is a new world order that's being yeah. set in a oh, place. Global capitalism. It's glo yeah, okay. Thank you. So now with the G8 summit, they don't come together just to play tiddlywinks. They're talking about domination of the world's resources uh -huh. and its capital, yeah. and that means the people. Uh, Agenda 21, we're talking about the globalization of all of these resources, and melanated woolly-haired people, their indigenous lands, have the resources that the capitalists want to control. But see, the, uh, the other flip to that coin in conclusion is that, that there's solar energy, there's water energy, there's air, uh, you know, energy that's controlled by air. All of these are clean, renewable energy. There, well, there's even you energy you weight made from our own waste. You fail to see, understand that the goddamn old capitalists don't care. You you don't not seeing things from a capitalist point of view. We don't want that type of competition there. You well, no, no, that we actually takes out the competition. They want competition. No, no, That's no, the no, point. No, 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 get in, get in. You know who the biggest pushback of, of marijuana is? Is 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 uh, who makes Marlboro cigarettes? They're, they're uh, the biggest. Philip Morris. Philip Morris, right? They're they're the biggest lobbyists pushing the back against marijuana because they don't want the competition. So the oil industries and the big you're missing it. They don't the want the missing. freedom. See, this is what I'm trying to tell you. The capitalists, whether it's the Russians, the Americans, they're all working together. No, they're not. Yes, they Stop are. That. Because no. if they want, if they were not the the new renewable resources that are plentiful, which would free the whole world, would be free and open, and the technology associated with them would also to uplift every aspect of this global community. You're but because they don't want cap the, the type of competition, it is it's not they so much, control it. No, 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 no. OK, we be getting off of this. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. There's a whole paradigm. When you talk about switching over from uh, fossil fuels over into water, whatever. You have right. to have the whole economy to back up this transition and conversion, Gideon. Russia don't want to do it. America don't want to do it. We're, we're in the comfort zone. So I understand that mentality, and I agree. We should. There was a guy, and they were making a joke on Facebook, said they, they're going to end up killing him. There was a guy, there's a white guy about in the 60s, he made his motorcycle run off water. They said, yeah, right. he's going to be dead tomorrow. And he was. You know? They killed him. That's why you're making my point. Well, I don't know they, they killed, killed him. him. No, no. Te man. Tesla was. No, I'm talking about, no, no, this is recent. This is on Facebook. Uh, no, There's okay. a guy. Go ahead. Right, okay, go right ahead. now. Okay. Go, ahead. Okay, go ahead. Kevin. Well, I, so I'd like to, I guess, br bring the conversation. I mean, I think it's good that we're getting out to the discussion of global capitalism. Mm -hmm. But I want to, like, go from there to race and the construction right, right, yeah, of race, yeah, yeah, right? Certainly. So so I brought uh, the new Jim Crow, Michelle Alexander, 2012, right. I believe it was. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to read from the book okay. so that we can talk about the origins of the KKK, the origins mm -hmm. of white supremacy That's and right. this and that, right? So she says, the concept of race is a relatively recent development. Exactly. The concept of race, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Only in the past few centuries 
owing largely to European imperialism, have the world's people been classified along racial lines. That's right. right. Now, I think what she's setting up here is the idea, right, that European imperialism and amassing wealth, right. particularly through capitalist production, exactly. um, is, is the reason that, that race was constructed. constructed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so she goes on to talk about the colonial period in early United States, right? And uh, she particularly brings up Bacon's Rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion was, I think it was 1670-something. Uh, so this is right when, remember, right when, uh, I think it's 1619 is often when people talk about Jamestown mm -hmm. uh, being founded mm -hmm. the, as right. the first permanent um, settlement, settlement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, white settlement in the, in, uh, yeah, the United States, right. what is today the United States. Now, we know that there were African people, slaves being brought over before that, long before that. And, and people there was, already there, hello. Yes, right. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There were Native yes. Americans already there. Bacon's Rebellion took place mm -hmm. on a plantation, mm -hmm. and it was a white indentured servant mm -hmm. uh, with the last name Bacon mm -hmm. who had united mm -hmm. black people who were enslaved, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. white people who at the time were basically experiencing similar, I'm not going to say the exact same, right? right. But similar treatment mm -hmm. to the black people there. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, he brought them together. And actually, you know, this is another complicated story. They were pissed off because the Native Americans were attacking them mm -hmm. and the white power structure was not protecting any of them. <laughs> uh, so that's complicated, right? Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. But they were upset about it. And so they rebelled mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. indentured, white indentured servants from the European uh, area mm -hmm. and black people rebelled together. And they overthrew and, and actually killed some some white capitalists, some powerful plantation people. And what, wow. what Michelle Alexander talks about mm -hmm. is that when that happened, the, the planter class is what she calls them at the yes. time. This mm -hmm. is the ruling faction mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in the early colonial period. So you had white workers and black workers rising up. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Oh. Rising up together. Right. Together, okay. oh, okay. Proletariat. Mm -hmm. And so the planter right. class, the white planter class, this is the people with capital, with money right. and wealth that they would bring over right. and buy land and then, and then put people, either indentured servants or slaves, to work, right? Exactly. And, she, and he says, or she says that what they did when they got together is they said, we need to come up with a plan to right. separate mm -hmm. the black people and the white indentured people who exactly. we need. Uh, because we, we need to, and so what they did and this is a common thing mm -hmm. in European imperialism, yes. is you establish hierarchy. Right. Exactly. Right. And so she calls right. it here the racial bribe, okay? Mm -hmm. Deliberately and strategically, the planter class extended special privileges to mm -hmm. poor whites mm -hmm. in an effort to drive a wedge between them and black slaves. Exactly. White, sledders, white settlers were allowed greater access to Native American lands. Mm -hmm. White servants were allowed to police slaves, mm -hmm. right? We, I mean, that's oh. still... Exactly. And, and I think today you might argue that it's not just white people who are now policing black right. people, mm -hmm. but you take a certain class of, right. of black people mm -hmm. and have put them into the political structure or the police, right? Exactly. Shout out to Bobby Jindal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Al and, Sharpton. And so then they created slave patrols and militias. That's and right. right. This is the beginning of police, what is modern day police exactly. in the United States. So that's... Militia. When we talk about police, we have to talk about the fact that this is an institution created to protect and uh, conserve rich people's, rich white people's Absolutely. property, right? Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, the, the reason I want to bring this up, and we were talking about this a little bit on the way over, is because I think even today, and um, I don't want to, like, preach too much to any particular people, but I think even today, uh, a lot of us misunderstand. We say, those white people who are racist, those white people who like the Confederate flag, those poor white people, you know, a lot of people use terms white, white trash, right, redneck, right. Uh, hillbilly. Exactly. I mean, these are charged terms that we use to say, and a lot of times it's wealthy white people, right. white people who are fine in the system, right. Right? white people who are educated. Yes. And, and I'm including myself in this category. Yes. We can distance ourselves. We can say, hey, yes. you and me are cool because I'm not those white people. Exactly. Right. But it was that class of people who 
use Absolutely. those white people to separate. Absolutely. And so, However, and this is even true yes. today, right. right? This is even true today. And so I think we always got to put this in that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we rally against the Klan, I want to bring it back to the Klan, right? Mm -hmm. The Klan has always been very reactionary. I mean, right. the Klan was formed the first, first uh, there's three different times that the Klan came into existence. First time was 1865. Mm -hmm. What ended in 1865? The Civil War. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Klan said, oh, oh damn, like we got black people are gonna get some rights. Mm -hmm. Let's get all these poor white folks together mm -hmm. and let's make sure that we maintain our spot. That's right. Because otherwise we're gonna be on the bottom and they're gonna and they're gonna do to us what we've done to them. Dreaded retribution. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and so I think today, and we've had three different uh, three different revivals of that. First one, 1865, they formed it. Then again in 1915, and this was largely 1915. Oh, the depression, right. Right, right. Wait, okay. Um, and that went through 1944. And this is like, it reached its peak. We're Wartime, talking yeah. three to six million people mm -hmm. in the 1920s mm -hmm. were part of the Klan. Mm -hmm. uh, this is. This happened in Atlanta, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, mm -hmm. This is the revival on Stone Mountain and everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. They actually were very against Catholics as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, this right. was all about, pro uh, they appealed to poor Protestant whites mm -hmm. and, and uh, brought that in. They were brought down though um, by Stetson Kennedy. He was, uh, and, and many others. I mean, right. come on, it's mm -hmm. not just one person. Sure. But this is when Stetson Kennedy like infiltrated. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring that in because Malcolm X, he, he would talk a lot about what did, he, what did he want? What was his direction to white folks who wanted to help out? He said, you infiltrate the Klan. Right. And so I almost wanted to bring that in today. I mean, the biggest oppressor, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the police mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as anybody, the views and opinions, right? <laughs> don't reflect. But I mean, when we talk about infiltration right. and exposing the mm -hmm. horrors, some of these leaked text messages from police officers mm -hmm. uh, right. using real racist language, mm -hmm. some of these mm -hmm. uh, exposure of, of the cops in Florida last year that mm -hmm. were part of the KKK. Mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps our role now is exposing the police. And so I know, I know you do some of that right. cop, cop watch, watch. but right. um, mm -hmm. I don't know, can you talk about that and the relationship there? Well, I mean, I think- the, And you the, can push back on it. Yeah, the yeah. way that yeah. I'm hearing what you're saying is we got these, particular folks, right, KKK, um, and they're white supremacists, but they're also, you know, poor, and they're not like the most important white supremacists, but I think we got to look at white supremacy f from, like, from a little further back and see it mm -hmm. as, a, as an entire system, mm -hmm. right? White, mm -hmm. so, so I don't even necessarily, like, uh, I, I think I'm, I oppose the police and their role in our society, but I don't think you can say the police are the most important part of white supremacy. Okay. Exactly. They yeah. are a part, right? Exactly. But there's all of these other parts and they work together, mm -hmm. right? Right. So you got the police and then you've got the owning class and then you got the media, right? Mm -hmm. You've got mm -hmm. global elites mm -hmm. and you've got poor white people, mm -hmm. right? Th these are all forces that are working together and they're right. supporting each other. Mm -hmm. um, and and when we recognize the the mutually beneficial relationship that they have with each other then we can start to recognize why we need to why we need to attack them all why like like until we get rid of all of these forces white supremacy itself isn't going to go away okay. now uh, let's bring our sister in here because yeah. the issue of sandy Glenn <laughs> and and her being mm -hmm. uh what i believe uh, being murdered after a routine police stop and we're talking about the confederate flag and we're just talking about white supremacy and, mm -hmm. and, and, and hatred being global and global entity as a, as a woman, as a female. Mm -hmm. what, what say you about these issues? Like, what do I think about the issues? Um, so are you, I know I'm like not really like up on my current news, but well, you're talking about the female who the cop said was too uppity when yes. he stopped yeah, yeah, her yeah, 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 and yeah. spoke back. Okay, um, I guess I'm obviously opposed to all, all of what's happening right now and I don't know, it just like scares me to think that just because somebody thinks that you're too uppity and that you're rising above the certain level that they want you to, I guess, like live to, that your life is at risk. Because sometimes I'm afraid, like when I heard the story, I was like, wow, so should I like not keep my like white coat in my car? Should I not like be articulate when I'm speaking back to the cops because mm -hmm. I will be killed for that? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like taking away some kind of right that I thought that I, 
that I inherited as a person, mm -hmm. you know, and it shouldn't be my skin color that defines like who I, who I am, how successful I could be. Mm -hmm. But um, getting back to what you were talking about before that, you know, um, white supremacy is like all these different entities, like talking about all these corporations. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you could even talk about um, the Christian faith. You That's could talk right. about police officers, Absolutely. like all these things going on. I'm like, yeah, we do need to break apart these walls, but I feel like the system is so far ahead of like yeah. the common person. So it's like, how realistic is it to really tear down those walls? Mm -hmm. And as far as like last year, I didn't really believe that the United States like committed I don't want to really say so much, but I didn't think that our nation oppressed so many nations right. the way that we do. Right. And I believed in, I don't know, the United States being like so friendly and like. You believe being, the hype in yeah, other words. Yeah, I didn't think our government was corrupt at all. Wait, but we do it for their own good. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, somebody was like, well, then why don't you just like move out of the U.S.? And I'm like, well, this is a problem we have everywhere it's throughout the world. It's global. Yeah, so it's almost like if we have something like that, if we have a government that could go into other countries right. and, you know, like go and um, kidnap like their leaders right. or like start all these coups and stuff, like then how... How do we expect to really like tear down our system here? Exactly. That's what I'm wondering. Excellent. I can answer Excellent. that question. Mm -hmm. See, we <laughs> got won. We don't like <laughs> the Democratic <laughs> leaders the because y'all always, always go against our capitalist system. As long as your mm -hmm. leaders abide by our capitalist rules, we're fine. Right. Yeah. You know, shout out to Manduro. Mm -hmm. You're going against our capitalist system there. <laughs> and if they yeah. don't, we will drop a bomb on you, your grandmama, and all your exactly. children. Well, it's not that easy now, because <laughs> yeah. Maduro's still in seat. In, well, you know, I mean, in it, uh, when we look at how easy it is, El Chapo is a Mexican drug kingpin mm -hmm. lord. Right. He's been in maximum security, pre oh, I'm sorry, was in maximum security First of all, prison. there's no such thing as maximum security in Mexico, but go ahead. <laughs> Compared, uh, comparatively, we, last, last time I checked, we just had two guys that escaped out of an American prison with the help of one of the inside right. people, and one was killed. They stayed out about three or four weeks. They had mm -hmm. a world war. So what, what we're seeing here is America is in a corrupt uh, and let me just say the, 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 the club uh, is Guantanamo is evil, Bay. Right? Have you mm -hmm. heard of Guantanamo Bay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that location where they did mm -hmm. all type of heinous, corrupt, perverted. And currently, that's still right. happening. Uh, Gitmo yeah. is still open, by the way. They're supposed to be. So, so it's on we, the table talking, now. But see, I think what Cuba. you so innocently mm -hmm. revealed is yeah. a sector of our community mm -hmm. that actually believes the rhetoric, the hype, the pontification of the pundits mm -hmm. to let to tell children and and specifically women because you're a target mm -hmm. we're when i say you're tar you're targeted for the propaganda mm -hmm. we're targeted for the uh jail cells the prison industrial mm -hmm. complex we have really well, so women are targeted with that's that right. as well exactly. they're, yeah. they're yeah. more yeah. and more yeah. but yeah. yet Absolutely. it's women that are the number one electorate mm -hmm. they voted your our you our sisters voted mm -hmm. more than white women okay so what we find is that's why i say it's so revealing what you're saying because mm -hmm. we are raising and let me just say this about the police the police are only the pit bulls of the, the worldwide system the, who, who do pit bulls have they have a trainer mm -hmm. they have owners see these police officers come out of households that have moms dads apple pie chevrolet and baseball. So wait, wait a minute. Okay. And lastly, you've got the judicial system, mm -hmm. which they reveal that judges were getting kickbacks from putting our children in jail. So you've mm -hmm. got a worldwide global system, and slavery is in full effect, and we and we're voting for it and paying for our yeah, own incarceration. What was unfortunate though, like right at this table, I can call three types of government off the bat. You know, I'm I'm for um, a democracy, you're for theocracy, he's for anarchy. So when do we well, come we out? Are, we're, we're for oh, okay, anarchy. Right, right. Which, oh, okay, I'm glad you Which said that. Not. Right, it's not a government. <laughs> However, so what I'm saying is that, um, and we got to do a show on that too, the anarchy <laughs> said that. We do, we do What I'm saying is like, before we can knock down the system, 
we have to have another system in place. And, you know, you and I are going to fight about that, Gideon. Because well, we're any not. type of theocracy. Yeah, we, we are. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Your Bible <laughs> says to kill the unbelievers. The Islamists say the same thing. So I'll be damned if I have a Hebrew Israelite or a Muslim or a Christian take over. See, he says thing. that in hypocrisy because we've been working together for years. No, no, the no, reality, no, no, get it. The reality you you of we, you we right, two, two with right. a, a diametrically opposed philosophies have been able to work together. This show is a microcosm of the world community. You, you, and us working together, me growing up with white people as a child. See, we intrinsically love each other and can work each other until we find out about what? Class. Until we find out about economic disparity. It's then there are artificial created uh, stimuli that yeah. invoke this type I, of rhetoric that makes us turn against can, can one another. Can I give another. you a real life scenario? Come on. You know, Saddam was known as one of the biggest oppressors in Iraq. Once they uh, knocked out Saddam, took it out, Uday and Hussein, they created a whole vacuum. Yes. Now, ISIS, they believe in a, a, a Islamic government. Al-Qaeda believes in the Islamic government. You know, this is reality. They're fighting each other, Gideon. How do you know that's in the reality? That's just like 9-11. Whether it's a reality or not, people are dying in the name of Islam. What, we, okay, what this young man just real. talked about and what you and I know, this is real media. What, what, I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that ISIS and Al-Qaeda will drag people in the middle of the streets and read the Quran and says where this person has did this, that, and the other, and we're going to execute them. Your Bible says the same what thing. I'm so I'm saying you, if any of you or your people come into government, I will have to take you out. You, let, me, let me push back on that. Now, Just real. when we talked about ISIS, what were they doing on television? Why are you ignoring Wait a minute, again? I'm not. Right. I'm getting ready to address that okay. issue very effectively. Right. They were talking about ISIS on the television. They were showing people being beheaded on television were they not yeah this guy was masked and he they were they found out he was from europe he but was he a european had Islamic, he, he had, had been Islamic. trained in Amer uh, not in america in europe he so what i'm telling you Gideon. isis al-qaeda all no. of these constructs are what this system uses good cop bad cop no. they're financing the people to fight against so they can ultimately take over everything after no the no get it, no get it, no get it. Or even, I mean, okay. I actually I, I actually kind of see that like, yeah, so they fight each other, whether it's to take over the resources or just to prevent any any actual structure from forming that could control the resources that are there, right? Thank you. I mean, Thank no, you. I, I agree to an extent that, or I think I agree, I think I agree with everything that uh, Gideon is saying as far as these groups are funded to fight one another. Being right. Um, against okay, okay. Yes. I can see that. Right, like, yes. like the Klan. Right? Oh, you can see it now the white man said. No, 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 no. What <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> he can see it while I'm saying. Well, first of all, first of all, first of all, Kevin. The white man said it now. Oh, okay, yeah. I can, I I can, can assure you. No, no, no. I can assure you that Kevin does not agree with no type of theocracy whatsoever. Well, that's true. I, well, we I had, identify so, as an atheist. I right, not believe right. in. Okay. So, with that being said, I'm confident that he will not support Trump. Now you're trying to reel him back in. We're on the same team that. now. You're missing that. You're missing that. You're missing that. You're missing that. <laughs> you're missing that. <laughs> as, as, as king of all the 80s. Yes, sir. I got you. Well, what you're really uh, identifying is how we are divided. See, what we just I'm I, only what we highlighted the is how we can unify. We unify, and like you said, we all want clean water. We want to be able to have a structure over our children's head. We want to be able to eat healthy food. But no, Gideon, everybody on the planet wants that, but the that oligarchy... Is, but would you say that that takes us some type of economical structure? Now, I think my personal position, socialism, I think will uh, a, a allow us to be in control of the means of the whatever, let's just say... True we socialism. Right, like, true socialism. Correct. Just like true democracy. Well, However, capitalism, you got a hierarchy, law. Exactly. So I'm saying... Well, in socialism, now, you what, do you have the same thing. You have a ruling class that that's has the socialism. power that the, that's not um, true socialism. That's you can look, go to Russia right now. We're talking about they're not true. They have not. the same concept where ruling families control the vast majority of the wealth. That's not socialism. That's yeah. not the textbook. Well, we're talking so look, we were talking for a minute about um, about the idea of groups being pitted against each other. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. mentioned the Klan. I wanted to I wanted to bring something up about that. Because okay. um, because when I was when I was in South Carolina, um, the the Klan 
got their butts kicked, right? Like they okay. they literally got beaten bloody while they were there. Okay. By pri- mostly by a crowd, like a large crowd of angry young black folks that right. were just not having it. And they were like, "You are here to say that you hate us. Well, we hate you too and get out of our town." And and you know, you are not welcome here, right? And you know, for myself, I found that to be very powerful and you know a positive thing, right? Like I, right. I thought it was good to see the clan get beaten down literally and, and ejected from the town. But I'm wondering, like, like what do people think about that? Like, is that, is that what we want to see? Is that, no. is that, a, is that it a powerful is, thing? It and, is no, not. no, 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 and, and, Go and, ahead. no, 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 wait, Gideon, you can't speak for all people. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Being that there was a racial tension, how you as a white person how did you i guess protect yourself from being not identified with the clan like well, how did people and here's the thing it was a, a it was a slow. rainbow coalition against the okay, clan right, right? right it was a lot of young black folks i think they were kind of the main force there okay. but it was lots of white folks you know lots of other kind of like people of color or whatever all we right. were all there against the clan and there was that kind of understanding that like we're all together on this right this okay. is not it's not just a race thing Right. Right, right, right. So what I'm saying is, how do you not get hit by friendly fire? So that, you're saying all the Klansmen are marked. They got swastikas. Mm. They got prepared fire. So it's Everybody obviously knew. that you didn't have it. Yeah. That, that, that's what I just want to make sure. I just want to say because I'm thinking if you have a racial, well, I mean, just say people trying to cause racial tension. Agent so provocateurs. Right, right, right. But, now, but I don't think so. I like well. No, he's the, just the saying the possibility I, of that being part of the like scenario. Ferguson. Ferguson, you had, and Agent I'm glad you said Agent Agent, tours, you had yeah. people that were purposely trying Absolutely. to get things riled up, and people, yes. the protesters, mm-hmm. like, no, 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 you get out of here, you're trying to start trouble, mm-hmm. so they were easily to able to identify him, but I'm saying in a large, and I see what they're trying to, even like with the, the, the guy that shot the nine people, their intentions exactly. is to start a race war. Exactly. He's a provocateur. So that's, that's an important thing, right, is yes. when we have multi-ethnic struggle right. against yes. white supremacy, yes. that is the only protection against race war. Because believe right, me, I, agree. I believe race war could happen. Yes. It is a danger, and I don't want it to happen. Well, right. But the way to prevent race war mm-hmm. is not to like smooth out the racial situation mm-hmm. and pretend like we're friends mm-hmm. and like there's no problem here. Right. The solution to it is for all people, regardless of right. their color, to stand up and attack white supremacy together. Well, no, because if we don't, then the people who are most affected uh-huh. by it, the black and brown people, are going to get fed up and lash out at whoever they see as news. Their right. Right. Newsflash: right. okay. the race war has started. But I want to hear. No, yeah, let's, let's no, ask, no. Let's ask. No, let's ask her the question. He, he asked the question. I what, 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 what was the, what, what did you about think like, about the bloodying of the Klan? As a woman. I mean, as a woman. I mean, as a woman. As a woman. <laughs> as, I mean, women think as, differently. No, as a, as a black person. Um, I mean, deep down inside, I was like, yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> but the other part of me was like, oh, no, I'm a little afraid because are they going to retaliate now? Are they going to retaliate against a whole bunch of black people? Are we going to have more people, like, shoot up churches or other, like, I don't know, black establishments? Burn I don't churches? Think, exactly. I don't think that's right at all. But... I honestly don't have a solution for it, but I do like what you're saying that people of different ethnicities need to really come together and just like tear apart white supremacy. But I'm wondering like how do we get white supremacists to see that what they're doing is actually wrong? You're looking at me like that's never going to happen. No, 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 I'm, 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 I am agreeing with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Kevin just read the solution right there because I'm thinking about the Ku Klux Klan, apparently, mm-hmm. from a historical data, they represent the working class. Right. So if they see the bigger picture, which I hate to say it, you got black and white people that are ignorant to the bigger picture. See, yeah. you got people that, I mean, let me not get started. Well, let me, let, well, then oh, let oh, me oh, get oh, started oh, then. Oh, hold on, well, let me finish my thought. Go ahead. Let me finish my thought. What I'm saying is that if you can show the Ku Klux Klan that they're backing a capitalist, even back then in the 1800s, a capitalist system that doesn't care about them, then maybe they will begin to, I don't know, put the pieces together. Because it's like, uh, at the time, the government was conveniently put the flag to rally up the troops. Well, now we don't need you no more because we got such a paradigm, so we're going to kick you all to the side. So the Klan has to look at, well, the government was never for you, even right. though that was a lie from the start. So right. they were never for 
the poor working class to begin with. Right. And so once the Klan began to see that, because I mean, I, I talked to, what's his name? They call him Grandfather Ku Klux, I mean, of the skinheads, Tom Metzger. Right. Mm -hmm. And he'll tell you, man, America is one of the most bloodthirsty capitalist systems. Right. He don't trust, I mean, and, right. and, he, and he sees it, but the, you know, unfortunately a lot of, I don't know, they, I think, that it was, it was saying a lot of them are reactionary and get caught up in the emotions. Exactly. Black people do too. Well, that's what he's saying. Now, right. let me just invoke uh, a concept mm -hmm. in your minds here relative to what that imagery that you just highlighted brings to mind. Because what we see, the agent provocateurs want the, the Al Sharp, and I, I say Al Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, the uh, the political pundits want, they make money off adversarial relationships. I'm not saying that there aren't haters out there. There are haters out there. We see the burning of the churches. But see, we don't know who's actually doing these things. The ability for us to be able to come together and reason together, it's just like I'm a talk show junkie. Uh, WAOK is one of my favorite stations. When a, a, a white person calls into one of the stations, it's automatic what they began to do is go into this type of emotional brainstorm right. and targeting and going back and forth rather than listening. See, the key element is to be able to listen one to another. The only way that we're able to have a reasonable conversation on this panel is that when I speak, you listen. When you speak, I listen. That concept seems very easy, doesn't it? But when we get out there in the major uh, the population, they have controls and mechanisms to stop that process from taking place. So what I'm telling you is, what is the, greatest the race war has already started. That's why we are being killed. That's why the churches are being burned. That's no, why our yeah. children are being. So it's already there. It's a soft war no, to yeah. a certain extent. I don't know what your definition of war is, but like Yanga said on a show before, a war is when both sides are fighting. When you have people talking about Jesus loves your baby and Allah and God going to fight our war, that's not a war. That's a massacre. It's a slaughter. I would it's definitely agree, but what the, see, what the political action does, it divides our power. When we were in Rosewood, when we were on Auburn Avenue, when we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we knew who the, the quote unquote enemy was. It was the outside invading force. Through political action and people telling us to vote for power, now we divide it from the Republicans and the Democrats, the Green Party from the Independents, mama against daddy, because mama is for abortion, daddy isn't. You understand? So mm -hmm. all of these political action groups have done nothing but divide our people. No. And that is the main focus for white supremacy. I got, I got a theory. I'm going to float a controversial statement here. One of the most unifying things that I've learned about in terms of unifying racial groups that hated each other is a prison riot. That's right. Yeah. You look at a prison situation, right? right. You've got white gangs and you got black gangs and right. maybe you got latino Latinos, gangs right. the gang structure is created and maintained by the prison wardens right they 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 empower the white gang and they let them run drugs and they exactly. let them organize because it helps them control the prison absolutely so they establish these race gangs they pit them against each other exactly. so they can maintain control of the prison exactly. but when the prison in these particular situations, I can't name them by you know by specifics, but you got these situations where there's major prison uprisings. Right. right. The prisoners work together. Exactly. Across racial lines. Exactly. Because they recognize that the prison guards are the common enemy, and that it's, the only way they're going to actually get against them is if they work together. And so you'll have bingo. people with swastika tattoos right. working alongside black people bingo. to get free from the prison. Yes. Right. And and so it yes. seems like that that's kind of a metaphor for exactly. what we got to deal with. We're only going to actually be able to unify exactly. when we when we make a fight. We, yes. can't, we can't be talking about getting along with each other. We can't be trying to like mm -hmm. create peace within the prison because there's never going to be peace within Ex the prison. Exactly. We're being forced against each other. Exactly. We have to destroy the prison in order to actually be able to have healthy relationships. Yeah. That's why voting will never work. Direct action is the key. I mean, that's such an excellent well, 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 metaphor. Well, well, get in. But apparently because that structure that he had, because you have the white gangs that are in control of the drugs, they had to make a conscious decision and say, look, here, we got to divide because they're doing us wrong. And so they had to put people over profits. Exactly. 
So you have to. So but that. Uh, but that 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 is a council decision because no one man is not gonna right. go. He's gonna put property over people every time. So if you have a council, that means whoever comes to the table, they got to pay all of this. Yes, and they rather not pay all. They rather they just pay one of this poor one person. Mm -hmm. That's how they what. divide right. and conquer. So, so that's why I go back to structure, Gideon. I'm agreeing with you. You don't agree. Your Bible. What did I just say? Read my your lips. Bible I teaches. agree with you. <laughs> then you need to burn your Bible. Burn your Bible because your Bible teaches a one man in charge. You you day. misunderstood that. No, I've I told don't. you that for years. I don't. I don't. Yes, you do. Who was in charge of the twelve disciples? Was it Jesus Christ? It was the Father. Right. One the man. The Father was not Christ, one, but that's a metaphor. One man. Well, for power. it's a metaphor, not people taking a run away because they look for one man to come out of the sky and come save them. Well, it's uh, the council that's going to got to give push back against corruption. Why do you think they're trying to bust up the unions? Well, philosophy starts with the power of one. Go ahead, sir. Well, I was just I was just going to comment on the fact that um, I think that I mean even in the even in the case of the prison riots mm -hmm. or or whatever it's going to be, there mm -hmm. is I don't know whether to call it democracy. All mm -hmm. these terms are so democracy, socialism, communism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all so propagandized. Okay, right, we don't right. have definitions. We don't have working definitions yes. for them that we're all necessarily going to agree upon. How about co opt? But yes, I mean cooperation, cooperation, <laughs> and I mean the idea of worker self management and yes. people producing things together for one another uh, in, in confederation. Well, I think these are things that we're for, right? I mean, exactly. I'm for uh, worker self-management. I'm for right. these things. Right. But those are complicated because in practice, mm -hmm. it's easily corrupted. Right. In practice. Uh, and so I think that's where we have to have more conversations about how, when we have a council or a mm -hmm. co-op or whatever mm -hmm. it's going to be, how do we literally treat each other mm -hmm. based on... Uh, and an idea that I would say is uh, intersectionality. How do we begin to understand the struggles of one another? How do we see class and race and gender identity right. and yes. uh, sexual preference? Yes. How do we, and and uh, all of these and, and sex in general? Mm -hmm. How do we see these things intersecting with one another? Mm -hmm. And then not reproduce structures that say, I'm going to get mine right, and I'm not going to worry about somebody else. Well, or I'm going to get mine to, because I don't like something that this other group believes. And I think religion can do that. Yes, it, it, it does. does. It does. It well, does. I mean, you have uh, the program like the Arena Unsisted. Yes. You have Hero Yah. You have programs that allow people freedom of expression without having the... Uh, cloak of uh, identifying at oneself as a particular type. The philosophy of humanity is that we all must live, learn to live and work with each other. And the analogy of the prison... So get, no, get it. I'm going to catch you. You going to work with homosexuals? I, I, I've been working with one on this program. Okay. Have I not? Right. What, about right, your what about your brethren? What about my brethren? Your, your, your Hebrew is lies. Uh, they have because there are people that are closeted okay. in their those environments. Huh. See, at the, the at the end of the day, as long as you don't try to force what you believe on me, but we work when for common goals, try to force then their way upon you, that baby. will, in and of itself, it, see the self property. Get in. Yes. When have the homosexuals try to force themselves their way of life upon you? Well, that's why you got legalized uh, same sex marriage, sir. Does that force their way upon you? Well, it forces the, me to pay through taxes for They pay what taxes. They, the point is... Get in. Do they not pay... Do the homosexuals not pay taxes? See, you're trying to create a division here. I'm not... I don't know. Well, 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 I don't know. What's this like, What's this? I'm simply saying we've been able to work together on this program. It's a microcosm for the society. And without trying to wear one's sexuality or labeling on one's shoulder... We can do it in the out. Uh, well, hang the, on. The I mean, I mean. Okay, so I just want to push back on the idea that that when you say wear it on your shoulder, I mean I'm allowed to be whoever I want to be, right? True. Right. And and uh, exactly. and and we should all be. And so that means if I want to be outward with right. whatever I want to be outward with, that's got to be okay with everybody. Right. And uh, right. I think. I think we can also, I mean, and I don't mean to be... It know, don't have to be critical, okay with everybody, but, you know. <laughs> but, but, I mean, even on the arena, like, let's look at the makeup of the people we got here. Sure. We're missing some balance, right? I mean, right. are we not? 
right? Uh, we got a female. We, we got one. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey. I'm gonna say this for She is woman. Hear her roar. <laughs> right, right. But I, mean, I want to see some more Mexicans on the goddamn. Well, show. yeah, I think right. we need to challenge ourselves, yeah. right. right? And right. I mean, I take, you know, I take responsibility. I'm not 